Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Uh, here I am on a Sunday morning. It's Sunday, June the 23rd, 2019. Remember the date, because we're going to make some long-term predictions here. Right? We're going to make some long-term predictions here. And let me just say, looking at the monitor here, I see this shirt is wrinkled and belongs in a commercial. My bad. It's a Sunday morning. Now, understand, we're going to speculate here. I want people to <laughs> just understand that I'm just telling you the matchups I'm going to go with. The leans I have on certain events that might take place. Right? My opinion's no better than your opinion. I want people to question everything. I'm just telling you the view from this seat. Right? In the comment section of this video, tell me the view from your seat because I know already this video is going to be controversial. Right? Simply because the subject matter is controversial. The heavyweight division right now is in flux. Right? You walk into your favorite pub, you think everyone agrees with you, then when you start talking you're gonna realize that there's the guy at the pub who believes that Deontay Wilder is the best heavyweight on the planet. Right? There's the guy at the pub who believes that Anthony Joshua had an off night and he's the best heavyweight on the planet. There's the person at the pub who believes that Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight. In other words, we're in an era right now in which there are huge differences of opinion. That's why, quite frankly, this is the best heavyweight environment I can remember since really Tyson stormed the gates in the 1980s. Right? Well, let's talk about another guy who many people believe might be the best heavyweight on the planet. What I want people to do is to just think for a second. How many heavyweight fights has Alexander Usyk had? Right? Just think about it for a moment. How many? Who has he beaten? As a heavyweight. Folks, welcome to boxing. The answer is no one. But yet, the World Boxing Organization has now named him as the mandatory contender. In other words, in a division where you have former champions like Joseph Parker, where you have guys who seem to have been major contenders for years, Dylan White, the WBO has leapfrogged Usyk over them. Believe it or not, he is supposed to fight the winner of Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua, the rematch. So as chaotic as the heavyweight division is, it's even more chaotic today. So let's talk about it. First, let me say this, and I understand people are going to disagree with me. It's odd. It's strange, but just understand, the titles in the heavyweight division are about to be splintered. These boxers make a living off of boxing. The paydays matter. The risk profile, the risk reward of every fight matters. So, even though Usyk hasn't had a fight at heavyweight, he is one of the most dangerous men in the division. Right? The way I see it, the only guys who really test him in the division, and I know, go ahead and start the comments now, are Tyson Fury 
and Andy Ruiz. Right? I think Fury is the one guy who can match him in fluidity. Andy Ruiz, I believe, made a mistake against Joseph Parker. Wasn't himself in that fight. I think Andy Ruiz has faster hands than Usyk. I think if Andy goes into the fight as a champion and hunts down Usyk, he's going to blunt a lot of the angles. Right now, that doesn't mean Andy beats Usyk. That doesn't mean Fury beats Usyk or Usyk beats Fury. What that does mean is if Anthony Joshua beats Andy Ruiz in the rematch, and I like Ruiz in that fight, let's be clear, but we have to think about the possibilities. If Anthony Joshua beats Ruiz in that rematch, if he then decides to fight Usyk, I think he loses that fight. As I've said here in countless videos, I believe one of the worst decisions I have seen a boxer make in recent memory was Anthony Joshua's decision not to fight Deontay Wilder. I know some of you are going to say, hey, Wilder should have accepted whatever he offered. Right? And hey, Joshua wanted to fight him. Wilder didn't want to fight. Okay, look, whatever. People who make deals understand. That was an opportunity to unify the belts that won't come along again for quite some time. I believe there are some who watch boxing a lot who believe, I know I'm one of them, that Joshua had a very good chance of beating Wilder. That Joshua's chances of beating Wilder were better than his chances of beating Ruiz. Than his chances of beating Usyk. When the public believes that you're the best in the sport or the second best and your possible opponent is the best in the sport and that opponent is knocking on your door and saying, hey, let's fight. I'll fight you in your backyard. Folks, make the deal happen. You don't make the deal happen. You might end up dropped, what, four times? You might end up embarrassed at Madison Square Garden. You might end up on the outside. Now look at the fights Joshua has in front of him. Before we had a guy with a long left hand who couldn't really beat him on hand speed. Right? A guy who, you know, Joshua, if he gets inside, would find more to hit there. Then he would, let's say, against Andy Ruiz. Instead of fighting Wilder and having the leverage to demand a rematch before the first fight, right? Have that rematch clause in. Rather than fight and say, hey, I'm going to be unified, because Lord knows unified's hard to do. Instead, Joshua fought Ruiz, got exposed, right? Now you have people like Freddie Roach coming out of the woodwork and saying he had a bet on Ruiz. Understand, Ruiz used to train at the wildcard gym. Right? You have to ask yourself how Ruiz, who, you know, used to fight under Bob Arum's banner, is now fighting under Al Heyman's banner, who already fought for the heavyweight title. You have to ask yourself how Ruiz was that overlooked. Right? And, of course, if Joshua is fortunate enough to get by Ruiz, then he fights Usyk, and I'm just here to tell you, from this seat, Usyk's a much tougher matchup. I mean a much tougher matchup than Deontay Wilder. Especially for Joshua, who doesn't have his reflexes, doesn't have his fluidity, Right? Is at a different stage of his career than Usyk is. Understand, Usyk's been around a long time. I know he doesn't have a lot of professional fights under his belt. But understand, he's older than Joshua. Understand, he's fought many different styles on the way up. 
right? Glowacki fought him, beat him. Tony Bellew fought him, beat him. Right? Usyk's fought tough, tough, tough guys. As an amateur, semi-pro we'll call it, he fought people like Joe Joyce. There's a heavyweight fight for you. Beat him. Right? You see Usyk in the ring. He can go righty. He can go lefty. He can fight inside. He can fight outside. Folks, that's a different level of fighter than Deontay Wilder, in my opinion. Right? So I don't know who mapped out the possibilities for Anthony Joshua, but Joshua blew it. So here's what I think happens here. I think whoever wins that Joshua Ruiz rematch is going to give up the WBO belt. Folks, we're going to get back to the days where every belt had its own champion. Right? At a minimum, you're going to have... Tyson Fury, the lineal. Deontay Wilder, if, if, did I say the word if, if he gets by Luis Ortiz, you'll have Wilder with the WBC. You're going to have somebody with the WBO. Then you're going to have the other belts. Now let's be clear here too. Right? The man who has the most options the guy sitting in the catbird seat, in my opinion, is not obvious right now. I believe it's Andy Ruiz. Understand, Andy, big money fight, the Joshua fight, the rematch is going to be far bigger than the first fight. Because now the world understands. Right? Joshua can lose the fight. Andy Ruiz is serious. Not only that, that first fight was explosive. It wasn't a snoozer where then you're waiting around for the decision. No, didn't reach the judges. Not only that, let's be real here. Ruiz gets dropped, gets off the canvas, right? It's a great left hand by Joshua. Joshua then comes back, look at the film, with an excellent right hand. This is after Ruiz gets off the canvas. Joshua hits him with an excellent right hand. Now it's because Andy Ruiz stays by the pocket right? and then comes back with a left. It's because Ruiz has a chin after getting knocked down that Joshua then gets dropped, what, four times in the fight. Right? So understand that first fight was high octane. Casual fans understand they have to be there for the second fight. Now, Tyson Fury just fought in Las Vegas. According to some reports, there were less than 6,000 paying customers in the venue. I know on ESPN Plus, the place looked packed, right? Let's applaud the producer who had some tight camera angles there. Right? But just, just understand... Tyson Fury's fight didn't get that many people. Part of it is because we didn't know who Tom Schwartz was. I'm guessing Ruiz Joshua 2 gets at least three times, at least three times, the paid crowd as Tyson Fury's recent fight. So let's be real with what happens after that. If Andy Ruiz wins that fight. And I think he does. If, if, and I don't see this happening, but it could happen, if Chris Ariola beats Adam Konaki, Konachki, right? Understand you're talking about an all-Mexican heritage world heavyweight championship fight between Ruiz and Chris Ariola. I don't care if the WBO jumps out of the bushes and says, hey, you need to fight Usyk. This is prize fighting. This is about setting up your family financially. This is about generation altering wealth. Right? If you're Andy Ruiz, you're not going to pass up a blockbuster fight with 
cultural significance, historical significance that people are going to remember. Right? I'll just say this too. Mexico is one of boxing's most loyal customer bases. Right? Long history of great fighters out of Mexico. As I said, if Ariola can somehow beat Konatsky, right, and that's going to be a front foot heavy fight. Punches are going to be thrown. Someone's going to get hurt in that fight. If Ariola can pull it off, then if he fights Andy Ruiz in Southern California or Las Vegas or uh, Jerry Jones's Taj Mahal in Dallas. Folks, I'm just telling you, that is a blockbuster fight that, quite frankly, you're not going to get elsewhere in the heavyweight division. I don't think Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury, the rematch, gets as much as Andy Ruiz, Chris Ariola. Let's go one step further. If Adam Konatsky beats Ariola, right, understand, you're talking about a Brooklyn fighter. If Andy Ruiz goes and fights him in Barclays or in Madison Square Garden where Ruiz won the heavyweight title, you're talking about a New York City event that's going to have everyone, their mother and their brother, at the fight. You're talking about huge box office. You're talking about huge exposure. Right? So pay close attention to what's happening there. I believe Usyk is going to be on the outside looking in. Right? Let's just talk about Tyson Fury. Wilder, the rematch. Let's say it happens. Right? I believe Tyson Fury wins that fight. But what I want to see from Fury is Fury on his front foot. Don't get me wrong. Bank the rounds on your back foot. You've already proven that when you're awake and on your back foot and it's before the ninth round of a fight and you have stamina you cannot box Deontay Wilder right but I'm a bit mystified I'm a bit mystified that the people fighting Wilder treat Wilder as if he's a defensive wizard right people are afraid to bum rush him I don't quite understand that Luis Ortiz decided to step on his front foot against Wilder and had success I don't understand how a fighter like Tyson Fury, who stepped on his front foot and smothered Steve Cunningham, who stepped on his front foot and beat Derek Chisora, got inside. I don't understand why Fury, maybe he's just shaking off the rust. I don't understand why Fury isn't more aggressive against Wilder. The ending of the Tom Schwartz fight, where Fury pivots, then has Schwartz up on the ropes and then unloads the chamber. We didn't see that against Deontay Wilder, and that was a fight that Fury was dominating. Right? Why not let the other guy know, player, this isn't going to be about you chasing me all 12 rounds. Right? I'm going to come inside occasionally myself. Right? This isn't, you're the hunter, I'm the hunted. This is me allowing you to hunt me for a few rounds while I bank them on the judge's scorecards before I pivot and make you pay for trying to hunt me. Right? So, long term. Long term. The way I see boxing playing out right now is I think we're back to balkanization. By that I mean the heavyweight title is splintered. Let's say, let's say Wilder beats Fury or Fury beats Wilder. Okay, great. Then the lineal becomes the WBC champion. But understand, they won't have the WBO belt. Right? They won't have the IBF belt. They won't have the WBA belt. Let's face it, too. Wilder, Fury aren't fighting each other until next year. <laughs> right? And so let's just say, as this thing plays out, 
you're not going to have a unified heavyweight champion for at least what? The next 18 to 24 months. Let me also say too, some guys are going to be openly dodged. Right? Again, what's king, folks? It's the payday. Whether it's in pounds, whether it's in dollars, whether it's in francs, whether someone gets wise, and it's in Bitcoin or Dash, right? Just understand, the payday is king. Just understand, a guy like Andy Ruiz could say, okay, I could fight a dangerous Alexander Usyk to keep my WBO belt, or I could just let Usyk have that belt, then fight a 38-year-old for a bigger payday in a fight that's going to be remembered 10 years from now much more in Mexico City than any fight I could have against Usyk. Let me say this too. I heard Tyson Fury say, hey, you know, fighting Andy Ruiz would be easy for me. I'm just telling you, I have followed Ruiz's career. It's very rare. I mean, very rare. When you get a guy with hands that fast, who hits as hard. I know Bob Arum has said Andy Ruiz doesn't hit hard. That's ridiculous, folks. The Joe Hanks fight mirrors, I mean literally, mirrors the Anthony Joshua fight. Where you see Ruiz's opponent hit the canvas, you don't even know the punch that dropped the guy. Then you look at the replay and you see Ruiz landing hard shots. If you replay the Ruiz Anthony Joshua film, I want you to just notice the force that Ruiz is getting on that right hand. Let me say too, guys with weight, guys with some body fat, you see this with Konachki, right? They will look like they're throwing arm punches to your body. Folks, they have their weight behind that punch. I know right now we're too close to the first event where if Anthony Joshua is asked about Ruiz's punching power, he's going to sound vague and ambiguous. Ego's going to get in the way. He's not going to be able to just tell you this dude hits hard. I'm just telling you Andy hits hard. So when I see the ages of the guys in the heavyweight division. Understand, Ali wasn't Ali when he was in his 30s. Right? The guy who beat Sonny Liston is 22 years old. You understand the legs are the first to go. When I see a guy like Andy Ruiz coming forward, crashing the pocket, and I look at opponents and I realize that an Usyk is in his 30s. A Tyson Fury is in his 30s. A Tyson Fury slowed down against Wilder. Gets dropped in the ninth round, gets dropped in the 12th round. Right? Wasn't able to back foot, foot it all 12 rounds. When I see that, I just get the feeling that Andy Ruiz here is being underestimated. Right? So, to sum up, a couple of things. First, the Three Kings paradigm that we had earlier. Wilder, Joshua, Fury, that's done. Right? That's done. Understand, even if Joshua gets his belts back, I don't see how he survives Usyk. Maybe he pivots to fight people other than Usyk. Right? But just understand, the boxing public will notice the pivot. Wasn't Usyk the 2018 Fighter of the Year? Hasn't Usyk already been in Joshua's backyard disposing of Tony Bellew? After Tony disposed of David Hay twice. Right? So, we the boxing fans now understand that the heavyweight division has many moving parts. Understand, too, there are other people who I haven't really mentioned in this video. I think Luis Ortiz is a live underdog against Deontay Wilder. 
right? Understand Ortiz brings something a little bit different to the party. Ortiz is a southpaw. Right? That gets interesting against some of these guys. Let me say this too. Adam Konatsky. I believe he beats Chris Ariola. I believe if he fights Andy Ruiz, that fight is going to be highly competitive. The only guarantee in that fight is it's going to be high action. Right? Both guys are going to be trying to throw blows, come together. Right? The one knock on Andy Ruiz, and it's substantial, is that I don't see the back foot game on him. Right? Understand, I don't see the back foot game on Deontay Wilder either. Both guys, both guys are heavyweight champions. Right? For the record, I don't see the back foot game on Konachki either. So we're going from big and clunky now to some front foot heavy fighters where it's going to be high action. Don't expect a lot of back foot, by the way, in Ruiz against Ariola. Right? So, understand, you're going to see some big fights. The public is going to demand some rematches if the fights are spirited, right? Haven't we already demanded a rematch for the first Tyson Fury-Deontay Wilder fight? Right? The heavyweight division is very different today than it was a few months ago. Let me also point out, too, that Ruiz has unfinished business. He lost to Joseph Parker. When Ruiz got the opportunity to fight Joshua, he actually said in an interview that Joshua was holding his belt. Not all the belts. The belt that was at stake in his fight against Joseph Parker. In other words, Ruiz in his mind is unbeaten. Right? I get the feeling Joseph Parker dangerous fighter especially when non-knockdowns are viewed as non-knockdowns and aren't counted as knockdowns as that first knockdown in the Dylan White fight was well anyway just understand Dylan White Joseph Parker they're in the mix too it'll be a good two years in my opinion before we have one man standing if we ever get to that point we were close to it we were close to it last year Joshua and Wilder couldn't close the deal I'm still astonished by that anyway that's how I see it let me hear from you I think Ruiz beats Joshua in the rematch I view Luis Ortiz is dangerous. I think Konaki beats Ariola. I think Ruiz pivots, gives up the WBO belt. I think Usyk is one of the world's best heavyweights, even though he hasn't had a fight yet at heavyweight. The WBO is going to put someone in front of him after the winner of Joshua Ruiz abdicates the WBO crown. If Joshua decides to push his luck, let's say he gets by Ruiz in a rematch, Joshua has rear punching power. He can knock out anyone, right? If Joshua gets by Ruiz, which I don't see, but he has a puncher's chance, if he pushes his luck and fights Usyk, I'd be rolling with Usyk in that fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. By the way, also keep track of Maris Breedis. Right? Understand. Usyk's toughest fight to date as a professional wasn't Tony Bellew. It was his fight against Maris Breedis. It wasn't Murat Gassiev, who's also at heavyweight. Just expect a lot of people to be viable for the crown at heavyweight over the next 24 months. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also say this too. 
I love hearing from subscribers. I noticed the comments to the last video got a little bit edgy. People were upset that someone was calling themselves Deluded Dwyer. Hey, I'm all for it. <laughs> right? Folks, let's have fun. Boxing's entertainment. Okay, I myself read Deluded Dwyer's comments. It's all right. You want to call yourself Dwyer? Go for it. One of the biggest laughs I had in my life was I was on Twitter trying to research boxing and I saw a picture that looked like my cat at the time and uh, the account called itself Dwyer's Cat. That's fine. Let's respect everyone's opinion. Let's not make it personal. I don't mind people roughing up someone over a boxing view. Right? But let's not make it personal. People can name themselves whatever they want. We'll go by YouTube guidelines on that. Thanks for stopping by.